Welcome to the highlights of the fifth and final ODI in the Colonial Medical Insurance Series between the Windies and England. The action coming from St. Lucia. The Darren Sammy Stadium has always been a picture and the pitch has been a very combative one for both batsmen and bowlers over the years. And there was a touch of grass on uh, the surface for this game, which suggested the bowlers might be able to get something out of it. The faster men, Jason Holder won the toss, elected to field first. Just confirmation of the teams. The Windies once again unchanged. No room for Andre Russell, given that Carlos Brathwaite played so well in the last game. And England had the solitary change. Liam Plunkett making way for Tom Curran. Let's get straight to the top of the action. Another opportunity for Alex Hales. Tough side to get in, especially in the batting lineup for England. He is a more than handy opening batsman in this format. Very handy numbers. 96 the strike rate. Always eye just always goes to that strike rate first, as opposed to the average. That's what this game is generally all about. Look at that from Johnny Bairstow. 46.82, 105. Welcome half century. A, a good clip in the last game. Then we have Sheldon Cottrell. Hero from the second ODI. I didn't play the first one. Gets his wickets, and as we know now, we see that army salute. Let's play. Just a hint of something out of this surface. That must have come off the thigh pad. Wind is so strong, actually. It's probably going to be not the easiest thing to hold your shape as a batsman and as a seamer. Not sure if that hit anything in the end. Same again, just too straight. Whether this is off the thigh pad this time, how slow is this outfield? And Shane Thomas getting out the big boot. Don't think it's been enough. How are you, Ian Bishop? Hello, the hard-working Rob Key. It's good footwork to jump over the advertising hoardings by Shane Thomas. But there is some movement, which is nice to see. There is some bounce after the mauling the bowlers took in Grenada. So he missed it there. That's OK, as long as he didn't injure himself there. First boundary. Oh, short, done for pace. Off the glove. Yeah, number one is the Windies need to apply a little bit more energy and body language in this first portion of the game. But there seems to be a little bit of extra bounce and it could be a little bit of a two-piece pitch initially as well. Both batsmen finding it hard to really time the ball, find the middle. Hold in, little bit of swing back in does for Johnny Bairstow once again. We see the salute. What was the key here, though? The key was to get the ball fuller. While the ball is swinging, get it fuller. There is a definite fault in technique from Biesto. Bowled a lot in the test series. Bowled across his career a lot. Sight to behold. The stump and the salute. Well done, Sergeant. Biesto goes for 11, 16 for one. England's number three, Joe Root, and also in good form in this series. Oh, length again, Ian Bishop. Oh, third man in play. Straight down his throat, simple catch. 
Joe Root now goes. Yeah, when the ball is bouncing as it is on this pitch, the third man is a catching position. It's not just a hangout line down there. And it was simple for Cottrell. Not sure where Root tried, if he tried to hit it square, a legal delivery, no problems. Let's try to help it really, but there's bounce in the surface. Hold the strikes. Bowlers in it early on this surface compared to the last one. Takes him getting accustomed to this pitch. Joe Root goes for 118 for two. This is an excellent start for the Windies. They have this England batting lineup under pressure. Owen Morgan now. And a lovely shot. First real shot of conviction. Perhaps the fullest delivery that Holder has bowled, probably on reflection on touch too full, but given that the ball is swinging a little bit, you probably take that. But he'll know that he needs to, to just find a length two feet shorter than driving length. Well, again, lovely shot. Have a look at this outfield this way. Yeah, fast enough. Good timing from Morgan. Good over for England. 11 from it. 33 for two. Struck this and the up very well. Cross seam travel in the air for a while, and the guys will hold it cross seam so that it hits the seam and kicks off the surface, as O'Shane Thomas did all of the last game. Hit firmly enough. It was in the air for a little while. Uh, speaking of length, with the pitch grip bouncing a little bit, you need to get the ball a little bit fuller than this. Too short. Hills gets on top of it nicely. There's that man. There is exactly the point I was making in the last over. It slices a bit off the face because of the extra bounce. Threaded it through the gap, but extra cover. 50 comes up for England. Oh, he's picking his spots well, Owen Morgan. Three times now he's gone through the covers, and he's, each time he's found a gap. Edged and gone this time. There's the extra bounce and the height of Brathwaite. Hills was starting to really feel it and was always going to go after this it was short a little bit closer to him and just bounced enough to take the edge simple catch to hope Brathwaite strikes as England lose their third wicket just outside the power play Alex Hales Gone for 23, England now 57 for three. Last game in Grenada, it was Joss Butler at five, Ben Stokes at five today. May well have something to do with, you look back at his career, he's a very good player on this type of surface. The quicker pitches, the bouncier pitches. Think of some of his best innings in Australia, in South Africa. a little too much width sort of form he's in Owen Morgan he's not going to miss out they don't have a lot of cover as we said earlier on that offside he's got a field more set for top of off stump and leg side or at the stumps with the fine leg and the deep square nothing out there yeah, this was just too wide so 
glaring gap at backward point. And is underneath it. Plan might have worked. Yes, good. Safe catch in the deep. And the short ball has worked. That's where his field was set. And it's job done for O'Shane Thomas. The captain has to go. Yes, a bit of misdirection. This one was short. And bounce a little bit too high for him to control. Second easy catch for Cottrell. And Owen Morgan, sentry in the last game. Has to go. Just 18, he's contributed. England 63 now for four. Short and bind into the pitch. Short's good, but not short and wide. Sick when Stokes, when pace comes at Stokes and that bat starts waving around that little bit more. As the bowler's running in, it's going up, down, up, down. Almost to the speed in which he thinks the ball's going to come down, then he looks for anything short. Another absolute crunch of this. So often in this series, the sound just tells the story. Oh, nice drift. Ooh, right in the gap. Right in the slot. Oh, this is a slow outfield, but it doesn't matter. He gets his bottom hand into the drive. He used to be taught just to use that high front elbow and get through the line that way. Now they just use the bottom hand and flick through it. He's nicked it. That bounce again, and it's Brathwaite again. Oh, the disappointment on Stokes's face, he knew. He looked round, and he has walked off. Oh, he is halfway off as the DRS timer is out. Good change up from Brathwaite, on a length, on a length, outside that off stump. Then goes for the short ball, yeah. That just confirms what Stokes knew, good catch by Hope as well, that bit of extra bounce. Brathwaite impresses yet again. And just as Stokes was starting to look set, he goes for 15, 88 for five. Hundred, hundred for five, just uh, picking off the off spin. Yeah. Nicely played. This time, got on top of the bounce. There's uh, the aggressive option taken by Moen Ali. He's itching to get on with it. He's a very aggressive player by nature. Not an easy shot to play with the bounce, the extra bounce, but he gets on top of it and smothers the ball. And Ashley is the man that they could probably look to try to target, but it comes with risk. Catch him, yeah! Edged and gone. It was really just a matter of time. An extra bounce again, and the push outside off stump, and a simple catch. Moen Ali, the latest to go. Excellent bowling by O'Shane Thomas. He'll enjoy this surface. Hard to control that shot on here, isn't it? Because of the bounce. Always bringing the slip and the keeper into play. 
got to look to bowl England out now by attacking from both ends if you're Jason Holder. No more stock bowling from one end, that's the way it should be. Ali goes for 12, 1-1-1 one, one, one for 6. Chris works more than capable with the bat, as those numbers uh, will tell you. A uh, short leg in place, a slip, a fourth, fifth slip. Conditions slightly alien to what he had been used to recently. Simple catch. Again, it's the short ball. Chris Wokes just never quite settled. And O'Shane Thomas picks up his third. Yeah, it's difficult to handle the pace and the bounce. The Windies have gone a lot short today, and Wokes has the ignominy of becoming the first England player to get a duck on his birthday in an ODI. Make of that what you will. Another step in the growth of O'Shane Thomas. Not to Wokes, 1-1-1 one, one, one for seven. Just, just, just. The other ingredient, Nick, and, and you talked about, you know, having time to practice on these conditions. I'll come back to it if nothing happens. It seems an unlikely mode given this pitch. Absolutely right, Bish. Another. Josh Butler just trying to help it on its way. And O'Shane Thomas is just too quick. He's just too good for England today. And that's why the investment has been made in this young man. He gets onto something like this. He can become almost unplayable. Good field set. How many catches for Cottrell so far today? Make it three of them. Bowl Jamaica, court Jamaica. Great for Shane Thomas, great catching by Cottrell. The Windies running rampant here at Darren Sammy Stadium. Butler goes for 23, 113 for eight. Big appeal. Not out, they may review. No. Hello. Hello. Difficult angle to, to be absolutely sure. Another big appeal this time given. England in real problems now, they're nine down. It's another short ball. Jason Holder has bowled brilliantly again. Yeah, so many batsmen not expecting the ball to bounce. That has bounced at least a foot higher than Rashid has expected, made it uncomfortable, has taken the outside edge halfway up the splice of the bat. It's just been too difficult for the batsmen and the England team to acclimatize to in a short space of time. Number zero, 113 for nine. morning Thomas Pfeiffer England 113 all out five wickets for Shane Thomas the 
England's lowest total against the West Indies. Last ball right up in the block hole. He was shown all three. And there's five for 21. Terrific performance. A bit of spice in this pitch, a bit of bounce, a bit of pace. England blown away, 113, 28.1 overs. 22-year-old, that lad. 5.1 overs, 5 for 21. Ball fast, he bowled straight. And nobody could quite get a handle on him. England rolled over for 113, not what they would have imagined coming into this important game. 23 to Alex Hales and 23 to Joss Butler being the highest scorers in the innings. Just 28.1 overs. It took the Windies to roll them over, led by the 22-year-old O'Shane Thomas. Five for 21, his first five-wicket haul. Wouldn't be surprised if it's not his last. A couple of wickets as well for Holder and Brathwaite, who used the bounce in the pitch superbly. What did it mean? Well, it meant that, that the Windies would need 114 runs from their 50 overs in order to square the ODI series. There's still something in this pitch. Can England extract what the West Indies got out of it? Well, the Windies must fancy it. They've had a small roller, a light roller. And England have got to go into test match mode here. They've got to have catches around. There are three slips. They're certainly not going to contain the Windies. Usual pairing for the Windies, an unchanged side. So England, not with three slips, they decided two slips and a gully. If Chris Gale's got a prior engagement, this could end very quickly. <laughs> four high in the air, over the slips, it bounces a couple of times, goes for four. Sure, he was trying to hit it, Chris Gale, but when he goes, he goes hard. Probably trying to tug it over long on. And went so hard at it, it just flew over the slips. Flashes through mid wicket, despairing dive. Four more. Well, he's been in tremendous form in this series, Chris Gale. Doesn't quite get hold of this. Seems to just catch the toe of the bat, but big powerful man. Once that beats the infield, it's gone. Tell you, he's got somewhere to go this afternoon. Six, 16 without loss. Well, brilliant entertainment. Great thought from Gail. We're going to get off to a flyer. Two fours and a six in the first over. England, 111 for five to 113, all out in 21 deliveries. <laughs> Quick 
bowlers are hitting this pitch. Just a little bottom edge. Didn't look in control in any case, and he's hitting into the breeze. So needs to think about what he's doing, John Campbell. He's absolutely right, Ness. <laughs> well, there's no flies on him. What a shot this is. This is the luxury of being an opening batsman. When you're chasing down a low score, you just say, people say, are you going to just defend and you got all the time in the world to get it or are you just going to go and tee off? Well, this is the right way to do it, especially if you're Chris Gale. He should play this way every time for this West Indies side or with this intent. Don't worry about taking time. Have a look at a few and then get into your work. This time offside, six more. Just bounce on the rope there, on the cushion. You just had to prolong that more then, didn't you? <laughs> the, the thing that England struggle with is back of a length and just steep bounce. What Gale's done to work straight away, he's just made him change that plan. So he's had to go full, and that is exactly where Chris Gale wants it. Straight into the cushion. <laughs> An extraordinary shot. Absolutely extraordinary from Chris Gale. Oh, that's a heavy bat, and he's moved that so quickly. I was going straight into the midriff, and he just had to think, oh. And he just swatted it away. Opens his body. That might have hurt had it hit. So the changes, just uh, the two slips now. Gully has moved out just behind square on the one. This time. Picks out Adil Rashid. England are celebrating. Chris Gale is going nowhere. Well, he's querying the height. Well, this is it. Have a look. It's all about how high this delivery is. Front foot is absolutely fine. Oh, a little step down, that might change a few things. No, I think that's all right. I think that's good bowling. Well done, Chris Wokes. Didn't go full, stuck to his guns. Well, he's bent knees and he's out of his ground. Well, third umpire sees it differently. One thing's for sure, the crowd are pretty happy. <laughs> it's gone uh, a long way. Forty for nine. Oh, and the other problem as well, that was the one for the over there. No ball meant that he couldn't go short again or was risking it there. Oh, whatever you say, whether you thought he was out, whether you thought it was a no ball or whether it was a legitimate delivery, this bloke's his box office. Enjoys this ground, he's bowling quickly again, and he's picked up his first. All eyes on the speed gun, that looked quick, quick through the air. Didn't need the bounce, didn't need anything out of the surface, just beat him for pace. 
wobble seam, what does it do out of those green patches? It just comes back a fraction. Well, it is a different game when this bloke has the ball in his hand. Much the same as what it's been when Chris Gale has been batting Wood with the ball. This series has been a revelation. Campbell goes for one from nine, 40 for one. Jay Hope then, average of 46, 400s to his name from 49 matches. from Chris Wokes and given and straight away reviewed right ball tracking coming now man here we go pitching outside off impact is in line and the wickets is missing so stand by I'll, I'll get you on screen we'll, we'll do reverse your decision you're on screen now thanks Rick <laughs> just dismissed. Even the extra pace of Mark Wood has just been clipped over mid-wicket for six. And out of canter, the 50 is up. Requir required right now, 1.41. That is into a stiff breeze as well. That is a big hit. You see the flags, that is going straight into the, where the wind is coming from. Well, it doesn't matter for Chris Gow. This time just heaved. Brute force from Chris Gale. Chris Gale is making short work of this. 12 runs from this over so far. 6.6. .6. Now taking some tap, 2.3 overs, one for 16. Incredible eyes he has here. I know he's in great, great form and he's a great player. To play shots like that. Well, you also compare it to how everyone else has looked on this surface. He is now 49 from just 17 balls. the run run they do an astonishing 50 an extraordinary 50 from Chris Gale from just 19 deliveries that is now the fastest 50 by a West Indian batsman previous was 20 balls by Darren Sammy on two occasions now Chris Gale 50 from just 19 balls fastest by a West Indian for the Yorker to finish the over an expensive one for Mark Wood well everybody's joining in Shea Hope this time You'd say about England's effort, naive, because this wasn't the last pitch. This has got a little pace and bounce, a bit of juice in it. So you've got to box clever. Use the 50 overs. Another one, he's dealing in sixes, even on this bouncy surface. It's been a record-breaking series for big hitting for Chris Gale and company. How many hundreds have we got now? We, we must have hundred hundreds. Hundred hundreds, sixes. <laughs> is it a hundred? No, I think it is. A hundred sixes. Exactly. Give it his best effort. 30 
eight sixes now in this series for Gale. Just watch how he plays this, he's back of a length. Talked about the naivety of England at getting in line. He doesn't get in line, goes leg side, look at his front foot. Goes way outside leg stump, gives him width outside off stump, and he clatters it into the boundary. Look at the technique here. 39 years of experience. It's good from Gill, it's smart. Just talked about the two deep fielders leg side, but Gill gave himself room because he knew third man wasn't there. Well, it's fabulous batting. England have said, what they're saying here, we're going to bang it in at you, we don't think you're any good against the short ball. And he's just said, OK, let's have a game. Just look at the way he's just staying leg side. His front foot goes away to the leg side. And fine leg would have stopped that, but he's not there anymore. Gale has manipulated the field, even inadvertently. Woods on his knees, England are on the knees. An extraordinary game of one day international cricket. No wonder everybody's dancing. He's just stood at the crease and he's thinking four or six. Can't believe it. 27 required. That's gone for six. Nine sixes in the innings for Chris Gale. Well, everybody's on the beach in no time here. Just look at the technique, just stood it, slow it all down. You're watching with his telecast at home, slow it all down. Front foot goes out the way to the leg side, and he just swings. Oh, brilliant shot. <laughs> look at the guys. Gets his revenge. Big smile from uh, Mark Wood. But too little, too late, you have to think. The entertainer. Well, he's had a terrific day again. 39 years of age. And the joy that he brings to so many people. He's a colossus of a bloke. Get out there and win the game. He's done that. Fabulous from... Chris Gale, look at that, applause the crowd, I've done my bit, fantastic. <laughs> 77 from 27 deliveries, 93 for two. An ugly shot from a Shea Hope. And a wicket for Chris Wokes looked like pace off the ball, which deceived Hope. Well, the game's gone. No real celebrations uh, from England. They've had a nightmare of a day, and Shea Hope gets a little bit careless. He's a better player than that, is Shea Hope. A little bit of joy for Chris Walks, but the game's good and gone. He's a better player than that, 13 from 18, 95 for three. Shimon Hefmeyer comes to the crease with 19 needed, and a lot of people are looking on to see whether even this little short period left Too close in length and four. But he just squeezes this on the thick inside edge. <laughs> oh, oh. 
Well, well, well. I mean, he really is opening up his offside play. He must have opened the face on that from leg stump. Same technique. Watch the front leg. Gets way outside leg. This gives him room. And Mark Wood has said there's nothing wrong with that. Seven to win. Still committed. Very good. One, one, one for three. Well, it's over in a flash, is this? Windies just need three. Victory off the bat of Sharon Hedmeyer and a wonderful victory for the Windies to square this series. Following a 2-1 test series victory, now to square it against the number one team in the world by seven wickets, it is a fantastic achievement. All done, all dusted, start the car. Unbelievable game of cricket. Over in 40 overs and two deliveries. Windy's coming back in great style. I've got to say, he's been fantastic fun. England's biggest defeat in terms of balls remaining in the game. Oh, my word. It's been the Chris Gale show again. Or oh, Shane Thomas as a young lad, 22 years of age, with five wickets. And well, the shake hands, what we're going to do this afternoon. Two towers, twin towers, man mounted, Holder and Brathwaite embraced, then Holder and Russell. Great credit to the coaching staff as well of the Windies. They have to get a lot of credit for their preparation. Remember, England came as a number three test team in the world. Blown away. Number one ODI team in the world. Drawn series against a team that had to qualify for the World Cup. straightforward victory for the Windies, 115 for three in just 12.1 overs. The highlight of their innings was a 77 from just 27 deliveries by Chris Gale, the fastest half century in ODIs by a West Indian. In fact, it broke Darren Sammy's initial record at Sammy's own ground. Two wickets for Mark Wood, but it came quite expensively at over nine and over, and a wicket for Chris Wilkes as well. He also travelled at over nines. The player of the match award went to O'Shane Thomas, his first five wicket haul, pace and bounce, and you'd think it won't be his last. Chris Gale was the player of the series, over 400 runs. He was the consistent scorer across all the matches out of all the players. Just to confirm that uh, this final game, the fifth and final game, went the way of the Windies by seven wickets, and it meant that the series was square. Hope you've enjoyed all the highlights and all the action from this game and the series. Look forward to your company next time. From St. Lucia, bye for now.